Let's talk about UFC 281 coming our way from uh, it's live in New York, so it's going to be a late one for the UK fans. Uh, Madison Square Garden, hell of a card. Absolutely brilliant card. Headlined, of course, by Israel Adesanya against Alex Pereira. If you're an MMA fan, you know the whole story behind that. But basically, I'm going to be going through this fight, taking a look at, a f at some of the fights that have jumped out of the page at me, where I'm just going to give you some more information about the fighters. It's, it's basically an MMA... Like, you UFC for dummies this yeah I'll go tell you briefly like about the fighters and just look at what they do well look at what they don't do well I make a, a pick myself but you can just use the information that uh, we're going to be going through just to either make picks or just enjoy it a little bit more because when you know the fighters a bit better you enjoy the events more and it's going to be a fun card regardless so let's start off uh, one thing I want I'm not going to do a full breakdown of this fight but um, Carlos Alberg versus Nikolai Negamiranu oh God, I don't know ne ne Negamiranu I don't know how to say that I'm just going to say Nikolai sorry I don't I haven't Worked on the pronunciation of that one. Anyway, uh, Carlos Olberg, he's another one from City Kickboxing. He's, he, he, he looked really good in his last fight. I think he got a knockout off of a jab. Um, Nikolai's a very strong grappler, but Olberg, he seems to be coming to his own. I, I think that's, that's not one that I'm betting on, but it's one that I'm interested to see. I want to see if Olberg can really capitalise on the momentum, uh, especially with it. It's, it's quite a heavy City Kickboxing card, this. There's a few of those guys that they, all, they usually fight on the same cards, and it's, it's pretty good to see. But the main one I'm breaking down first is Mr. Dominic Reyes against Ryan Spann. So, basically, a little background on these. Ryan Spann, he's come off the Dana White Contender Series, which is a smaller uh, show that Dana White does to get people off of uh, regional promotions and give them UFC contracts. And he's looked very, very impressive. Big guy. Both of these, these are very, very big guys. Uh, Reyes is a former title challenger. Uh, he had a very close fight with John Jones. He was not robbed, though. He was not robbed. People say that Reyes was robbed against John Jones. It was a close fight, not a robbery. And he lost the fight. Since then, he's lost every single fight. So look, he's got to try and find his way back to some form. That's the storyline behind this fight. Can Reyes find his way back to form? And can Ryan Spann capitalise on the momentum that he has got after his, uh, he's, he had a great submission win last time out against Eon Kutaleba. He's actually got an awful lot of submissions. He's got loads of guillotines. I think he's got more than 10 guillotines. I'm going off memory there. But... And, uh, and a rear naked chokes as well. He, he, he attacks the neck very well. And as we know, that is the highest percentage submission move. Percentage-wise, attacks to the neck are the most successful. And that's why you see so many people doing them. And he and Brian Spann does them very well. Look, tailor the tape. Size-wise, these guys are very, very similar. Like, they're very, very big. I think Spann's got a very slight height, very slight reach. But nothing really to separate the two. Now, uh, like I said, it, for Reyes, it's been a rough couple of years since the John Jones fight. And he was, in his last fight, he fought Jerry Pachaska, who is now the light heavyweight champion. So, you know, there's, there's no shame in that. But he was at least competitive until he wasn't. And then, you know, Jerry just absolutely smashed him with some spinning back elbows and things like that. Now, that was May 2021. That was over a year ago. So I'm thinking that Reyes has maybe had a chance to just collect himself, get his mind right. A lot of the, the, the sport is mental. He needs to get his mind right because he's clearly, he got to a title shot, so he's clearly got the physical attributes in order to do it, right? Now, on the other side, you've got Ryan Spann. This, this is a tough matchup to try and get your mat head right with because, as I said, he's just been looking really, really great. Uh, he, he got the submission against Ian Kutaleba. He gets those high percentage neck submissions. And you know what? I think that he probably gets another one here. I just feel like that Ryan Spann, his easiest path to victory is not to stand with Dominic Reyes. I don't. I think that Spann could win on the feet, but what I'm saying is that that's not the easiest path of least resistance for him. The path of least resistance is to find a scramble, get this to the floor, and get the choke. And I think that is what happens. I think that he adds another guillotine to his record. I think he's so good at snatching him. It, they're, he's going to create a scramble, grab hold of that neck, and when he does, it is game over. So I'm going submission for Mr. Ryan Spam. Then you have got Brad Riddell versus Renato Moicano. Now, this one is quite a, quite a, a classic fight in that it's a, 
a savage kickboxer in, in Brad Riddle. He's another one who's comes from the city kickboxing gym, uh, same as uh, Allberg and obviously the main eventer tonight, Israel Adesanya. Uh, Brad Riddell, he is just an absolute savage on the feet. He's so, so powerful. Now, Renato Moicano, he is a submission wizard. He's got very good Muay Thai as well, but his stand-up is usually used simply to set up the scrambles and to, uh, to set up the submissions uh, accordingly. Uh, Rafael, he fought Rafael de Sanos. I believe he se stepped up at short notice, but de Sanos beat the piss out of him. Absolutely beat the piss out of him. Now, this is why I don't think he's going to be too inclined to stand with Riddell. Because Riddell, he's very, very good. And don't let his record fool you. Riddell's coming off of two losses, right? One of them is a, was a submission loss to Jalen Turner, which was set up by strikes. But you've got to remember, Jalen Turner and Raphael Fazeev are two of the most savage up-and-comers in that lightweight division. They are ridiculously good. Jalen Turner, especially. Like, I've had my eye on him for quite some time. He can kind of do it all. He's tall. He's very tall for the division. I think he's like six foot two or something like that. He's very tall for the division. He's got very good submissions and he fights long very well. So, a loss there was no surprise to me at all. And Raphael Fazeev, he's on the cusp of getting towards tight. His kickboxing is so good. And he caught him with a great spinning uh, back, spinning wheel kick. And it was. It, it, and people are going to get caught with those, right? Now, Riddell, he has got a lot of knockouts on his record. 50% chance if he wins, he's going to knock you out. However, none of those have been in the UFC. That's worth noting. When the competition got stiffer, the knockouts started drying up. Moicano, he's just, he's a submission wizard. 10 wins, 9 submissions. So he, he, he gets them from everywhere. He's so good at just grabbing submissions everywhere. And I think that this is the biggest kind of gap for me in, uh, in the fight. But he has to get it to the ground first. So the path of least resistance for Moicano, he is to, is to grapple. He's got 62... Uh, Riddell's got 62% takedown defense. So he, he stops more than he gets taken down but that's still not brilliant but for me i don't know after the absolute beating that rda put on moicano i think and the city kickboxing guys are actually quite difficult to take down look at volkanovsky for instance just difficult to take down difficult to keep down i'm not saying that riddell's on the same level as volkanovsky just because they train in the same place but i'm saying that those guys at city kickboxing they really do drill um, keeping the fight on the feet because they know that's where their their best chances are. And I think that Riddell can get the win here. I really do. I, if it stays on the feet, Riddell, I think he's going to get the first stoppage of his UFC career. I think he's going to get his very first knockout. And that is just me speculating. Like I said, that's probably a tech. Like, this one could easily go either way. You know, I could easily also see a Renato Moicano submission very easily. But for me... I think that it stays standing. I think that Riddell, when you line up their skill sets, Riddell's probably a slightly better kickboxer, slightly more advanced than, um, than Rafael de Sanos. I'm not, what, I'm not sure what I'm basing that on exactly, just on what I've seen from them. Um, I think that Riddell, if, if de Sanos can put that much of a beat down on Moicano, I think that Riddell can also put that kind of a beating on Moicano. I think he can get the stoppage. But... Again, I'm, I'm not very confident on that pick at all. <laughs> then you've got Dustin Poirier versus Michael Chandler. So this one, again, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a classic matchup, really. Uh, Dustin Poirier, he's a strong prospect. He's challenged for the title twice. Uh, he beat Conor McGregor, which is what kind of put him on the map, kind of in effect, because whether you like Conor McGregor or not, he does tend to elevate. All, rising tides raise all ships, you know what I mean? And uh, just getting those wins really it, it increased Dustin Poirier's stock. Michael Chandler, long-time Bellator champion, rival promotion to the... Well, not rival promotion to the UFC, a smaller promotion than the UFC. Uh, he's an absolute powerhouse. He either gets beaten devastatingly or he wins spectacularly. Those are the two things that Michael Chandler does. It's what makes him such a fan favourite because he is just so fun to watch. Now, they're almost identical in height and reach. Slight edge for Dustin. Now, for me, 
This matchup is pure fun. It's pure fireworks. It's so evenly matched when you look at the stats. When you go through and look at their strikes landed, like per minute, significant strikes, takedowns, all of that. It's so goddamn even. It's ridiculous. The, when you look at it, for me, Dustin is probably the cleaner striker. I think, that, I think most people that know these fighters would concede that. He's the cleaner striker. He's probably going to land the better, cleaner no more technical shots he's probably gonna have a slight speed advantage but Chandler has that one great equalizer which is one punch knockout power that you cannot buy and that is what makes this interesting because Chandler he only has to land once against Tony Ferguson I thought that was the best we'd seen Tony Ferguson in quite some time and then Chandler just unleashes a front kick from hell a front kick knockout when you see the size of Chan's legs you know how much power was on that thing and you saw the, the result it was scary he's got absolute dynamite in his hands he's got dynamite in his feet and that is one hell of an equalizer if you're going to be at a slight technical slash speed disadvantage so for me this one stays standing all day. I do not see it going to... I don't see either one of these guys shoot for a takedown. I think they're drawing a line in the sand and they're going for it. And I think, for me, again, this one, flip a coin. Flip a coin and then go with your gut. You'll know who you want to bet on when that coin is in the air. But I'm going with the power. I am rolling the dice on the power of Michael Chandler. I am going to take Chandler by knockout and... That is, just, and that, that's that's my pick. Again, I'm not confident because I just realised that this one's a coin flip. Really, it is. It's a coin flip. So just enjoy the hell out of this one because this fight is just literally, it's got fun written all over it. It's, it's like a lot of these fights. It could easily steal the show. Next up, we've got Carla Esparza defending her strawweight title against Zhang Wei Li. And this breakdown is going to be exclusively over on my Patreon. So if you would like to see that breakdown head over to the Burt Locker on Patreon now. So then we move on to the main event, Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira. Now, the background for this one, as Adesanya is a long-time middleweight champion. He is the king at middleweight, five title defenses, great kickboxing style, great at stopping takedowns. He has been criticized recently for having a point fighting st slash playing safe style, uh, especially against the Cannoneer fight. People were leaving early for that fight because they knew that, look, he's just cruising to a, a points decision here and he's not going to knock him out. And that's, look, and look, I will never criticize a fighter for going out to win. That's the fundamental thing that they need to be doing. But I'm not going to pretend that it was an exciting fight because it wasn't. But then again, you know, and, and people say, oh, well, it's not his job to be exciting. It's like, actually, it is. If you, if the, if the sport is not exciting, if everybody fought that way, people wouldn't watch the sport and then they'd make no money. That, and it's all about making money at the end of the day. The, the sport is entertainment first. That's otherwise, if, if all we cared about was the technique, we'd all be watching glory kickboxing or like, you know, or, ta or taekwondo. Nobody is. I mean, very few people anyway. If you just care, if everyone cared about just the sports side of it, that's what people would be doing. They're not, they're watching the UFC because people like the narrative. They enjoy the storylines and they enjoy the, all the smack talk, all the build up. They enjoy the guff. People love a bit of guff. <laughs> and I love that. But yeah, so Alex Pereira, he's a long time pro kickboxer who actually beat Israel Adesanya twice in kickboxing. So he has been fast tracked to the title shot here. He has been fast tracked. He does not deserve to be there on merit alone. I just want to make that very, very clear. Now, this one, like I said, it's not being done on merit. Pereira, he is good, but he's not really fought enough in MMA to warrant him having this fight. But to be honest, I think that there are plenty of people in that division that give Pereira a lot of problems and the UFC are cleverly sidestepping all of those guys, pushing the narrative that he's beaten Israel Adesanya twice in kickboxing and so therefore he deserves to be there. Because if you put him against like a Brunson or a Vittori or even a Robert Whittaker, I don't think Pereira has a good time in any of those fights. I don't think he beats those guys. But is what it is. Like he's... He is where he is, he did what he did, and now he's in the title shot. So, let's talk about those kickboxing losses just for a second. Because, look, we've all seen this clip here, which is 
Israel Adesanya getting knocked out by uh, Alex Pereira in kickboxing. Bang, bang, lovely hooks, boom, right in his face. We've all seen that. But, and also he's like, he lost once to him before in, uh, it, it was a points decision. But it was a very close fight. One could argue Israel Adesanya won the first fight. I have watched it. I, I'm not going to play, I can't play the whole thing. Obviously I'll get booted off YouTube. But just, yeah, it, it, go back and watch those fights. You can find them very easily. It's, the first fight was a coin toss. Second fight, actually, what they don't show you is that Israel Adesanya was beating Pereira right up until that point. Look, he's smacking him with kicks. He's hitting him there. Like, the referee stepped in and gave him a standing eight count. Israel Adesanya kind of had his number in that fight until he got caught with those hooks. So what I'm saying is, is this is being billed as Pereira being the better kickboxer, and that's why they're putting him in this fight. But is he the better kickboxer? I don't know that he is, actually. And that is the main selling point for this fight. So for me, the main selling point for Pereira winning this fight is him being a better kickboxer. But actually, I don't think that he is. I think that Israel Adesanya is probably technically better. He's quicker. He's going to be much more technical. And I think that this one's kind of a... Uh, it's going to be a bad night for Pereira for me because I just think that... Unless he tries to grapple with it, with Israel Adesanya, which I don't see happening. I know that he's been training with, with Glover Teixeira, who's a very good jiu-jitsu guy, just to elaborate on that, a fellow Brazilian, and he's been helping him with his grappling. And we saw, obviously, uh, Adesanya get exposed somewhat against the bigger guy with Jan Blachowicz when he got taken down over and over again. But for me, look, everything's going in favour of Israel Adesanya here. He's younger. He's 33 and uh, Pereira's 35. Now... He's, when you look at their records, Israel Adesanya has almost twice the kickboxing experience as, um, as Pereira. You look at their MMA records, it, Israel Adesanya has got so much more experience, almost three, four times more experience than, than Alex Pereira. For me, I just feel like... Adesanya is going to have the timing. He's got the MMA timing. He's been in. He's been out of kickboxing in, in MMA long enough to just not really sweat this dude. I think that Pereira has power. He's got power, and if he catches Adesanya, he's going to put him out. But Cannonier had power as well. Cannonier had power as well. Didn't get near as Adesanya. Now I'm not saying that Cannonier is on the same level as. Alex Pereira when it comes to kickboxing but I also don't think that Alex Pereira is on the same level as Israel Adesanya when it comes to kickboxing I think that yes he caught him in that kickboxing match I think that too much is being made of that and I think this is an easy night for Israel Adesanya I'll be taking Israel Adesanya by decision here I don't think it's going to be a particularly entertaining fight I think it's going to be similar in a lot of ways to the Cannoneer fight but it, it might not be, to be fair, because you know Israel Adesanya might be looking to prove a point, but I doubt that. Israel Adesanya is not stupid. He really isn't. He's not going to go in there fighting emotional. He's going to go in there fighting to win. And the way he wins this fight is he touches Pereira and forces him to make, make a mistake. And Pereira might be the one that lunges in and makes a mistake. And that, and that will be, if there is a stoppage, it will be because Pereira has swung recklessly and left himself open, and then Adesanya will have capitalized on it. But if Pereira is careful, Israel Adesanya is going to just also be careful, and he's gonna watch his P's and Q's, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, just keep checking up those points. He's going to be hitting him. He's going to be attacking the legs. He's going to be hitting from for a hit. He's going to be hitting and not getting hit. And Pereira, if he doesn't go wild and open up, he's going to lose a decision. If he does go wild and open up, he's probably going to get knocked out. Either way, I see Israel Adesanya and still. And that's my take on it. Don't get me wrong. Pereira's got power. He could catch him. But I don't see, I, I just don't see any area other than power where Pereira has an advantage. And I don't think he's technical enough to be able to unleash that power in an octagon, in a cage fight with Adesanya, who was just a, a wealth more experienced, championship experience as well. He's been fighting the best in the world. He's got five title defences. I don't see Pereira's skill set 
being the one to take out Israel Adesanya. And that's my thoughts. So let me know in the comments. What do you think? What do you think is going down this weekend? I'm excited for these fights either way. It's going to be fun to watch. So I'll be recapping these next week, uh, either Wednesday or Thursday. And until then, keep those odds long and those bets terrible.